So first of all, we'll look at um, sailing vessels and the different types of sailing vessels. So you've got the uh, start at the top left there, um, fin keel, and the next one's got a fin and a skeg. And the next one's got a long keel, which is more traditional. So the whole bottom of the boat is the keel. Um, bottom left there, racing keel, tends to have a very thin um, keel with a big bulb of lead at the bottom. And bottom right, we've got a bilge keel, and we'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about that later on. Displacement vessels or displacement yachts. Displacement means that it's in the water all the time and it pushes its way through the water. So these are examples of displacement yachts. And here's another displacement yacht, which was a traditional pilot cutter, which was designed to sail out and meet the ships and put a pilot on board. And these are displacement traditional um, sailing vessels from the Norfolk boards. These displacement vessels are J-class yachts, sailed in the 1930s and racing primarily for the America's Cup. This is a square rigger vessel. Um, always in displacement mode and it pushes its way through the water. Semi displacement yachts. So we said displacement is when you're pushing through the water. Non displacement or planing is when you're either skimming across the water or surfing down a wave. So here's some examples of semi displacement yachts, both the fin kill and the bilge kill. And today, modern um, cruising yacht will be it's semi-displacement, so most of the time it will be pushing its way through the water, but in heavy winds or down waves, it can go faster than that and plane or skim across the, uh, the water surface. Bilge kill. So as we can see with this bilge kill, it sits happily here on the sand um, or on gravel. So as long as you've got a flat surface, you can work out your tidal heights. We have tidal heights in our other videos. Um, set on the tidal height and she'll quite happily sit between the two bilge kills and the skeg there at the back. The great advantage is that you can work on the bottom of the boat and if you dry her out regularly, um, you'll get less weed on the bottom because that will dry out and you can give that a clean. Um, this advantage, um, the performance of sailing isn't as good as a traditional one keel vessel. And sometimes the air when you're going towards the wind gets caught under this keel and it slams and bangs. Some vessels have a lifting keel, so you can lift the keel just like a dinghy right up inside, and it quite happily just sits on the uh, sits on the seabed there. The advantage of that is you can go into very shallow areas and go to places that other vessels can't necessarily go, and like here you can sit on the beach. Uh, traditional uh, vessels, this is a Thames sailing barge, which are traditional for the River Thames and the Thames Estuary. Um, they had flat bottoms. So they could sit on the on the bottom or they could go into very shallow waters. Um, some of the cargoes they had to get was to collect mud. So they had to go and dry out and um, collect the mud. And they had to go into very shallow areas. So it had centre boards on the sides, uh, which are called lee boards, for stop it going sideways. Um, and every time you turned or tacked, you have to put the lee one, or the one away from the wind, down and lift up the windward one. And there's a few of these Thames barges. Um, still sailing um, on the east coast. Planing yachts. So more modern yachts will have the ability to plane, um, which is going faster um, than their hull speed. So they go faster and faster, lift up, and they skim um, on top of the water. So they've overtaken their bow wave, and they're skimming over the water here. And on more modern ones, they'll have foil. So this sticking up here, have a foil, and that produces lift pushing up which gives you the ability to plane faster. So these vessels are getting more and more technologically advanced, going faster all the time. And the Vendée Globe, which is a race single-handed around the world, um, that goes every four years. And every four years, the advance on technology is amazing. And here's a, uh, a picture of one of the Volvo 70 around the world vessels. And that will have a very thin um, keel with a bulb on the bottom. And here it will have um, the dagger boards with the foil on to push it up um, to give the ability to plane um, quicker and faster. And there we can see the foil here. So the, the, the weather one, the one on the, the windward side is out, the one on the leeward side will go down and it will give it lift, pushing it up. 
dinghy is because uh, they're they're lighter. Um, it's easier to plane. So here's a dinghy with the um, spinnaker up, skimming across the water, um, planing. Foiling. So you get more and more foiling boats these days. So this vessel here has a foil, just like an aeroplane wing, underneath um, the centerboard here and one on the rudder. Uh, with foiling vessels, they'll come up out of the water. They'll drag very little. Um, so as soon as they pop out of the water, they'll accelerate. And because they're going faster, you feel more wind um, and you can go faster than the speed of the wind. So the development of dinghy sailing and yacht sailing is going towards foiling and it's getting quite exciting with all the, uh, the foiling going on. So here we have the um, Catamaran America's Cup yachts and these, these yachts can foil upwind and downwind and they can also foil during the manoeuvres, so during the tacking and jibing. Um, they can do it through the manoeuvres. In the next America's Cup, um, it will be monohulls, single hulls, with foils either side and a foil on the rudder. So the boat will be effectively flying through the water. Um, it won't have a keel, so if the boat stops, it will capsize. Um, so we fly through the water and it will foil upwind and foil through the tack and foil downwind and foil through the jibe. Multi-hulls. So when you've got two hulls, it'll either be a catamaran with two hulls or a trimaran with three hulls. So the main advantage is very spacious accommodation, um, a great living space here. You can sit up the top and have a great view, good sunbathing areas. Um, slight disadvantage is they don't go into the wind as well as a, uh, a monohull. And also you need more space to park it in the marina, so it's more expensive to moor or park in the marina. If you do capsize a catamaran, it's really difficult to get back upright. You need help to get the boat back upright. These are America's Cup catamarans, where's the, the extreme example. See how fast they're going. We can see here on the rudder, the foil on the rudder, and on the windward foil here, um, you can see it brought up, but you can see how it affects on the water to lift the whole vessel out of the water. And if they're, because they're on the extreme, if we do have a, um, an accident, it will tip and it will go quite quickly with great force. Trimarans, very popular uh, for racing, very popular in France. So here's a typical trimaran, and when it's going, when it's sailing, this windward um, hole will come out of the water. And on some of them, they will fly it, they will sail just on this one, so the windward and the main hole will be out of the water. And we can get trimaran dinghies as well. Power-driven vessels, so again we have displacement and non-displacement, so here's a picture of displacement and you can see he's pushing this bow wave, um, so you see the wave here <clears throat> along the side and out the stern, and as you go faster this bow wave gets bigger and bigger, but it never gets the chance to overtake the bow wave and plane, so all the time it will be in displacement mode. So here's a displacement hull um, of a displacement vessel, and you can see there's a lot of vessel in the water, um, so looking sideways on from the back from the front so this vessel will never get up on the plane or overtake its bow wave and here we have a commercial displacement uh, vessel this is work boat the tug and you can see the huge wave that it's it's pushing in front of it so here we have the the ultimate displacement craft um, obviously a submarine it will disappear underwater Semi displacement, so some of the time it's in displacement mode. Then you go fast, you can see there's no wave at the front, it's overtaken the wave and it's skimming across the water, which is called planing. So here's a cross section, so it has cutaway here and it has the ability to lift up on the water and skim on the water in its non displacement mode or planing. And here's another semi displacement vessel. And you can get them as quite large vessels as semi displacement. So, non displacement craft, planing craft. So, these vessels are designed to overtake the bow wave and plane and go in speeds of excess of 30 knots. <coughs> so, they need to keep flat on the water. Um, they're only effective in calm weather. So, if we have um, a big seaway, they really don't like it and they can't plane. So, what will happen? Picture here. A lot of energy from your engine or outboard here. Here's your bow wave, you overtake your bow wave, the bow comes down and it skims across the surface and it becomes a lot more stable. And here's another picture of a boat that's designed to plane. 
So in heavy weather, um, they really don't like it. They can't play because if you start planing, it will bang, it will bounce on the waves and do damage. So you have to slow down. So in other parts of our course, we talk about wind with tide and wind against tide. So if the wind and tide are together, it flattens the seaway out. If it's wind against tide, we'll get big waves. And we said with our passage planning that motorboats need flat water. So even if we're going against the tide, if we've got wind and tide together on flatter water, it's a better time to go for motorboats um, than wind against tide. So what controls have we got? Um, on this one, we've got the engine and the propeller can move up and down. So we've got inboard engine, hydraulic ram alters the angle of the engine. And we've got little boards at the back, which are called trim tabs. So we can put lift up and push down to stabilize the boat sideways and to stabilize the boat up and down at the front. We can move the propeller up and down. <clears throat> so here we go. We can move the propeller. So we move the propeller forward, bow goes down, move propeller aft, bow goes up. So as, as we're going along, we can adjust um, the trim of the boat by moving the propeller up and down on the leg here. So here we have the flaps at the back. We can move them down and move them up, and that can adjust the trim on the, the, the bow. So if you push the flaps down both at the same time, the bow will go down, lift the flaps up, the bow will go up. Um, and if we've got a side wind, we can adjust um, the flaps or the tabs to stabilize the boat. So we have an introduction to vessel design. Thanks very much for watching. Please um, like and subscribe, and um, have a look at some of our tutorials and videos from Essential Navigation and Day Skipper. Thank you very much, Paul City Sailing.